Hello, 大家好，我是林安妮 ，and I'm greeting you from my home in Camarillo, California. I have to say I am really grateful to the Verbeest Institute for this opportunity to talk about my great grandfather Paul Splingard. I can't talk about him at home because, at the mention of his name, the eyes start rolling because I have been talking about him incessantly since 1994. And that's when I started researching、um, a book about him, and that was shortly after I discovered Mandarin Paul Splingard by Scotus Joseph Spa. I I know that Paul would be thrilled to be getting so much attention 115 years after his death. So thank you.、Uh, for those of you who don't know who Paul Splingard was. He was a a poor foundling, with very little education or refinement, who accompanied the first Scotist missions to Mongolia in 1865. He lived and thrived there for 41 years, and he died in Xi'an the same year that he went back to Belgium on a business trip. Was it a coincidence he died that same year? I don't know. I wrote about him after digging up about as much information as I could about him, and published my findings in a book called *The Belgian Mandarin*. After that book was published, I came across new mentions of Paul or things relating to him, so I gathered these along with some behind-the-scenes stories and, and new images relating to Paul Splingard. And I put them into a 220-page book called *Assembling the Paul Puzzle*. At this moment, it's only available in PDF format, which allows for hyperlinks and higher resolution images than a printed version could offer. I used to share my information and images or documents my, with my dear friend and collaborator in Belgium, Christian Gunz. He in turn shared them through his website, www.gons-purbaix.be, along with his own finds on Paul and his descendants. Sadly, Christian died two years ago, almost to this day. But his family is keeping the website available for Paul's descendants and anyone else interested in his story. Christian and I both gave presentations at the reunion of Splingard descendants at his statue in Ottenburg in November of 2008, and these PowerPoint presentations are available through the website, his website, or ours, splingard.net. Some of you may have seen the statue to Paul in Ottenburg. It was commissioned by the Hollenberg Historical Society. To commemorate the centenary of Paul's 1906 death, I wonder how many of you know that there's another statue of Paul. It stands in Jiuquan, China, where Paul worked for 14 years as a customs inspector, itinerant judge, and general all-purpose Mandarin or civil servant. The statue was installed in 2009 at the suggestion of the late historian. He Duanzhong, whom I met in 2005. Professor He's Australia and U.S. educated son Wei and I have been friends, and he and his family have visited us in California on a few occasions. <clears throat> When I began my research, I reached out to fellow descendants for more information on Paul. And I found that one of his specialties happened to be bridges. His ability to learn languages quickly permitted him to build virtual bridges between Belgian and Chinese business entities, and he was called upon as a translator and negotiator on many occasions. It was for his role in the negotiations between Li Hongzhang and King Leopold's representative, the Count of Durcel. That Paul was knighted as a Chevalier de l'Ordre de la Couronne, but there is also a physical bridge that plays a part in the Splingard family history. 
Lanjo is the city my, my, my paternal grandmother was from, and it was an important stop in the Gansu or Hershey Corridor in China's far west. It had been used for centuries since the Middle Ages for overland trade until the eastern seaports were opened in the late, teen, late 19th century. Lanzhou is bisected by the Yellow River, and the only way to get from one bank to the other was over a pontoon bridge or rafts made out of ballooned goat or sheepskins. This was a hazardous way of getting across that was inoperable during inclement weather and every winter, and so many lives and goods were lost. Paul had a plan to improve the crossing of, of the river. He was familiar with the sturdy steel bridges that existed in Europe and proposed to the local governor bringing some Western technology to construct the bridge over the Yellow River. Even though Paul died three years before the originally, the bridge originally known as First Iron Bridge across the Yellow River, it was completed in 1909. <clears throat> The regional arch archives do give him credit for initiating the process. Finding his name and that of his son Lin Ade, whom we know as Uncle Alphonse, in the archives, it was the reason that I and seven other descendants of Paul were invited to the gala celebration of the centennial of the bridge, at which we were made honorary citizens of Lanzhou. That bridge has been known since 1942 as Zhongshan Chao or Sun Yat-sen Bridge in his honor. This celebration would probably have gone on without any Splingard participation it would, if it were not for Verbeest Institute founder Jerome Hendricks. I wrote to him in 2005 for a list of Catholic churches in China that might have a link to Paul Splingard. The church in Lanzhou was the only one that provided results. The pastor there knew the Jungs and contacted them. And I found my, grand <clears throat> my grandmother's family, with whom we had lost contact since my family left China in 1947. Um, a two-part documentary on Lanzhou TV details our encounter. Finding my Nai Nai's family was the highlight of my many years of research. So thank you, Father Jerome. You have shown that even after so many years, since 19, 1863, when Paul first met Father Verbeest, the Spling Guards still have ties with the Skirtists. And then I'm here too. This may be a good time to mention the Zhongshan Chiao that we descendants affectionately call Paul's Bridge will be featured in the TEDx presentation on September 11th. It was postponed from August 21st due to COVID, and it should contain some corrections that I provided to one of the organizers, Zhao Pan. More recently, after I finished my second book, Assembling the Paul Puzzle, I learned that Spanish sinologist Raul Ramirez Ruiz had used the Belgian Mandarin as a reference in his 2017 paper, Neto and Yadan, The Last Two Spaniards in Qing China. Professor Ramirez's papers and media appearances have provided new insight into Paul and Alphonse's work in Lanzhou. The subject of his paper worked at the Belgian-operated copper mine and, and the Belgian-run textile factories also mentioned. Um, the person who was in charge of that factory married one of Paul's daughters. Po Professor Ramirez's more recent YouTube video also offer contemporary views on developing relationships with China today, which I found very interesting and necessary. One of the noteworthy accomplishments of the little Belgian colony in Lanzhou that Paul and his son Alphonse fostered was the formation of a school of mining, technology, and language that would become Lanzhou University, or Lanzhou Dashue. That institution is considered today to be the best university in Western China. Skirtist Father Van Dyke taught French there, and the chemist 
Robert Geertz, who sailed with Paul from Belgium to China in 1906, were among the noted professors. My uncle, Liu Guanghua, is a retired Lanzhou University professor, and his son also works there. He would be my cousin. Professor Liu was the husband of my grandmother's niece, Zhang Jianqin, who died 10 years ago. <clears throat> a more recent event that featured Paul was a talk by Ping Fung, curator of Chinese art at the Seattle Art Museum. She found me through my Facebook pages of a Belgian Mandarin and told me about her presentation. And on November 26, 2020, she featured a link between the Buddhist manuscripts of Dun Huang and Paul Splingard was identified as the first foreigner to see the manuscripts. Apparently, Paul saw them before the better known oral Stein. It was Stein who let the world know about the Dun Huang caves and its treasures, some of which are in museums around the world today. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about one of my favorite subjects. If you'd like to learn more about Paul, I invite you to visit his Facebook page or goenspugbe.be or splingard.net or contact me and at splingard.net. I will close with a wish for success for the Verbeest Institute in their efforts on improving the lives of the people of China and Mongolia. 再见!